we finally got a grand final fitting for the occasion. Momentum swings were traded throughout the game, but as the scoring dried up in the second half, Collingwood did just enough to close it out. The game itself represented both teams' seasons and recent history. It was the 2022 recruits of Collingwood that all played important roles in winning the match. Not many people would have thought that Bobby Hill, Tom Mitchell, Oleg Markov and Billy Frampton would be premiership players at the Magpies in their first season. Bobby Hill was unstoppable all day. He just kept buzzing around and always seemed to have space and time. He could have easily kicked six or seven, but his 18 disposals and four goals were spectacular. In many ways, he is this season's Tyson Stengel, and for a future second round pick, he has already paid his price. It makes it even more admirable he beat off a bout of cancer in May last year. He is tough. Tom Mitchell was sub in round 18 and was subbed off in round 19 and 21. His position at this time was shaky. But he is steadied from then on and his one on one with the Brownlow medalist was impressive. He outplayed Lockie Neal, not only restricting him from getting the ball, but the 24 touches of his own, including seven clearances and a game high 13 tackles, were impactful. It was a big time role that he performed perfectly. Not bad for a couple of third round picks. Oleg Markov was solid again, and although Billy Frampton had only two disposals and a few horrible drop marks, he did at least put a big body on Harris Andrews all day. Although, if Collingwood did lose, I'm not sure his role would have been as highly appreciated as it has been. But all four were either unwanted or looking for a fresh start and in just 12 months have become premiership players. Craig McRae turned to Bobby Hill in the post-game press conference, looking him in the eye, saying minute by minute, then moment by moment. It's officially no fluke Collingwood wins all these close games. After a 2022 full of them, you could argue it was luck, but with a 2023 finals run of an average winning margin of just four points, they clearly have a plan and don't muck it up. The big moments in the game were won by Collingwood. The two goals at quarter time and half time were uplifting. Jordan Degoe's answer to Charlie Cameron swung late momentum, and then Steele Sidebottom kicking a huge goal from a Jared Berry 50 metre penalty gave the Pies scoreboard space. They did get lucky with the advantage call on Zach Bailey, but Nick Dacos's composure was phenomenal. His little kick to Will Hoskin Elliott killed time, and it was a clumsy big O high tackle that effectively ended the game. Collingwood won more of the little battles which Fagin conceded in his press conference. You know, the, the, the people always talk about this in finals moments. You know, um, they kick a goal right at the end of the first quarter, they kick a goal right at the end of the second quarter, those sorts of moments. And when you lose a game by four points, you look back at those things and go, apparently we had to defend it a little bit better then. It did seem at the end of the day, it was set up for a Collingwood win. Peter Moore was selected to hand over the Premiership Cup and it's likely the last time we see a father hand over the cup to his own son. And it makes Darcy Moore a Premiership captain in his first year with the responsibility becoming the eighth player to do so. The Dacos brothers join their father becoming Premiership Pies while veterans in Scott Pendlebury and Steel Sidebottom get their second Premiership 13 years after their first. Sidebottom was terrific but go back and look at Penderbury's 11 disposal last quarter. He was the best player on the field. And the mic drop moment was from Craig McRae as he announced on the presentation stage that his wife had given birth earlier in the morning to a girl. Today was always, uh, sorry, today was already the best day of my life because my wife gave birth to a little girl this morning at 7.45. The stars aligned for Collingwood to win, and they did. It was exciting and close, which perfectly represents Collingwood's last two seasons. They played for the coach, each other, the past players, and the fans, all of which was highlighted in Darcy Moore's speech and Craig McRae after the game. So close, yet so far. Brisbane's finals experiences under Chris Fagan. They took a step further this year, which was a success, and Fagan was optimistic, believing this side is just entering the Premiership window. 
their list is still filled with players in or entering their prime and will be bolstered by Will Ashcroft returning. Besides Dane Zorko, Ryan Lester and sub Jared Lyons, no other player in Brisbane's grand final team was over 31. The optimism is good, but there are no guarantees for the future. Collingwood kicked one goal six in the third quarter and it's only now looking back at those misses the Lions should have been a few goals down at the final break. They kept fighting and got in front, but let themselves down at a critical centre bounce. Jared Berry will forever regret his 250 metre penalties, with the second one costing a goal. But when they had momentum during the second quarter, they just couldn't put a gap in the scoreboard and ended up losing momentum in the match, going into the halftime break down a goal. Again, they lost too many moments to win the game. Individually, their stars had mixed performances, as Dunkley did okay under Goey, but he got loose to kick two important goals, while Dunkley did nothing offensively. Neil was beaten by Mitchell, and Zorka was generally quiet. Danaher played well on Moore, and the dangerous forwards besides Hipwood had their moments. Andrews was superb, as was Coleman's first half, but he faded as the game went on. If you look at it collectively, Collingwood had a few more contributors through the entirety of the match. With saying all of this, they did end up losing by just four points. These are all the tiny margins between winning it all and finishing second best. Fagan is positive the team can build off the loss and propel forward. Comparing the loss to those of Hawthorne in 2012, Geelong in 2008 and West Coast in 2005. You know, the Hawks lost a close one in 12 and won three in a row. Cats lost one in 08 and one in 09. Um, West Coast lost to the Swans 05 and come out and won the next year. So there's plenty of history around to say that, that you know, grand final losses don't have to define you or destroy you. They can, they can make you. So um, that's what we'll be looking to do. But it's all about Collingwood and the turnaround. They look cooked on and off the field in 2021 but they are living proof of the positive impact change can have. They got rid of bad contracts, brought in a fresh senior coach, and created a culture, environment, and game plan that the players, staff, and fans have bought into. Every aspect has culminated together to get this result. Teams have done this before, but to do it in just two years is very impressive. It's time to celebrate, and the club and fans will for a while. There is a good chance the Pies will be around the mark again next year, while Brisbane will reflect from another bit of heartbreak to try and take the final step in 2024.